refresh. And then it should be linked. Is it going to work? Hey everyone, welcome back to another episode of Code With Me. Wow, it's been a while since I've posted a video about this series. I was out for most of December. I was in Hong Kong, which was really fun, but also I didn't get much of a chance to code in 4.0. As you can see in my world right here, I have some ticket machines because I was testing the different mechanisms for it and signs as well. Signs now function properly, which is pretty cool. So today what I want to show you is not related to the ticket machines or signs, although those are pretty cool as well. What I want to show you here is something that has existed in the older versions of the game but I haven't added back to 4.0 yet, and that is elevators or lifts. So let me show you what our existing behavior is. I haven't finished coding all of this by the way, so this is going to be incomplete. So right now we have the lift track and the lift floor track which is already in the existing version. So let me place those down real quick. And then we have the refresher as well. So I right click and my lift appears. And then if I click it again, you can modify different parameters and stuff like that. So that all works and that's good. Wait, did that work? Okay, I think that worked, I'm not sure. Okay, and then we have the buttons, which we can link. I haven't coded the display of the buttons onto here yet, so let's just pretend that the buttons are rendered here. So then if I click the button, I should request the lift, and that goes up. Okay, what I want to show you in this video is something that, it's, that has been requested from other members for a little while now. I'm not sure how long which is different directions of the lifts. In real life, sometimes you might have some diagonal lifts or even horizontal moving lifts. So I've added just that. These are horizontal tracks and I can place them like so. And let's put down some buttons as well and link them to here. I haven't actually tested this myself, so I don't know if this is going to work. Oh, I have to refresh this first. Refresh. And then it should be linked. Is it going to work? If this doesn't work, then I'm going to have to look into the code again. If I request this, it comes down. Is it gonna come up? No, okay. Let's see what the code is looking like. Actually, before I dive into the code, I think I figured out a way to make it work. So, for some reason, when I refresh the path again, it's not getting updated in the lift. So instead, if I break the floor of the existing path, then the lift disappears. And I place down the floor again and refresh it again. The lift appears down there and then this time, when I press the buttons, the lift successfully comes to the floor I requested. All right. And then if I press on this floor, the lift comes over here. Oh, <laughs> I saw that little bounce. Still moving a little bit. The movement of the lift is still a bit glitchy, as you can tell, but I'm working on it. So, well, I'm also wondering if I can offset the values here. Hmm, that didn't do anything. Oh, now that did something. Just so that the lift doesn't clip into the wall. Okay, that works. I also have encoded in the door opening and stuff, so it might look a little weird. Yeah, there you go. Let's try something else. So if let's say my lift is going to come back up here 
to this floor right here. I've made another track called the corner track. So this is the horizontal track, the vertical track, the corner track, and the floor track. So we have the corner as well. Let's put that down. So the corner, depending on what part of the block you click, it's going to face a different way like that. So if I do this, 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 and so on. And then I'm going to just break the path and then re redo this and put the buttons down and redo that and refresh the whole thing. And let me request a lift. Oh, that looks so funny. <laughs> At least it works though. Now I can request a lift over here. Hmm. The bouncing is kind of funny. I might have to look into that later. But it works. So one thing to note though is if you make tracks like this, let me break this. It's going to take the shortest distance to get to the destination. So it's not going to So it's going to take a weird diagonal line, the shortest distance between the two floors instead of accurately following your path you've set up in your world. So for example, if I make a track that looks like this, the lift is going to just cut diagonally across instead of following the zigzag directly. So let me show you what I mean. If I press the button, watch this last part. It's just going to take a smooth diagonal to your destination. I don't know if that's what you want, but that's how I coded it in so far. So I guess maybe waypoints will be useful if you want to make more accurate paths, but for now this will do. And I'm happy with the result like that, like this. So I requested it on the bottom floor and then again on this floor. So when the door closes, the lift is going to come back to this floor. All right, everything's working as expected. Now I'm going to break this, I think. And what happens if I refresh the path? Hmm. If I refresh the path, the lift doesn't seem to take on the new path. And it still thinks it's on the old path. Oh wait, no. Maybe it's not registered with this anymore now. Yeah, if I press this button, the lift is not going to come here. If I press this, the lift will still go over there. Cool. But if I press this because I broke the track and I refreshed it, it's no longer going to come here. I think what would be useful is if I was holding the refresher, the lift would show its path like as like ghost blocks or something. So let me try to code that in. Okay, so back in the code, I have this class called render lifts which is quite similar to the other files we've been seeing. For example, render rails and render vehicles. Render trains is just rendering everything. So it's calling render vehicles, render lifts, and render rails. This should probably be renamed. As I mentioned before, I just kept the name just for old time's sake, but it's not an accurate name for that. So I'm back in render lifts and I want to check if yeah let me put a boolean here like is holding refresher would be equal to i think i have a utility for that i forgot an i block is holding wait utilities not in utilities hmm i forgot what the method was called Okay, so I just decided to use the vanilla method, which is dot is holding and lift refresher. So if we're holding the refresher, we want to iterate through the floors. And I realized that the methods I have in the lift class doesn't have any anything that can allow me to do that. So I think I need like a, 
like a method. For example, public void iterate floors. I don't know, I just don't feel like exposing the floors array because I don't want people just modifying it. So I like to use these iterate methods, although if we're going to draw lines between them, you know what, let's just do it. Consumer of lift floor. And then we just do floors dot for each consumer, just like that. And then now we have to build it, which will automatically copy it into this project. And then we can see our new method. Okay, I think the build is finished, so let's see, iterate floors, there's our method, and okay, for starters, let's just try to render some, I don't know what to render, render a shape, what should we do, a circle, what, what do we have available for us? So to render something, we can schedule it. Identifier. I'm kind of coding blind here because I forgot how to do a lot of things. So mod ID, I don't know. Uh, textures block. Uh, what textures do we have? Exit. <laughs> lift.png. I don't know if that's even a real texture, but let's just try that. No priority render layer. I think light. We want it full brightness. It'll be okay. And then there's our callback with the graphics holder. And then what would this? This would be the offset. Draw. Hmm, draw texture in world, I think. So we can use that. Hmm. So this takes in, what does it take? It takes in float values. I don't want to necessarily use float values. The reason is because if I... How do I say this? If the coordinates are too high and we use float values, we're going to get jittering just like what we saw in the existing versions of the mod. So instead, we're going to have to do some translations. Yeah, that takes in a double. So that's going to be better. So... Oh. I need to review how to do this. all this. Okay, I decided to go with making a model instead, an entity model. So maybe that would be easier to render. I just thought of doing that. So I guess we need to make a static thing here. Private static final model small cube. Model small cube. And our texture would be, um, let's just do like redstone block or something. I don't even know if that's the right path for the Minecraft redstone block texture, but we'll see. Okay, so instead of this scheduling render, we will have our model render. So. Stored matrix transformations would be similar to what we do up here. And then... We need to add some transforms, which is the lift floor. Translate lift floor. dot position uh, 
Do we already have position defined somewhere? Oh. And why is it the wrong type? Okay. Position dot x, position dot y, and position dot z. So when we render, we can just put our stored matrix transformation light. Mm. We need the constant from IGUI, which is the max light glowing. I just like it glowing so that at nighttime when we're debugging, we can see it pretty easily. Okay, so let's test that. That should render our little cubes on each floor. Okay, let's test it. I'm gonna refresh, and there we go. Our little redstone indicators are showing up. So let me try one more thing. When I connect this track and refresh, all right, so this one shows up too, so it's part of the track. So when I press this, oh, the lift does come over here. I wonder why it wasn't working earlier. Hmm, that's weird. Let me do one more thing, is to make like big lines to connect them so that I can see what's going on. Like how the floors are being connected together. Okay, so this is what I have. I stored the previous lift floor here in this variable and then if it's not null, then I'm going to render a line from between these two positions. Yeah. Okay, let's see what that looks like. All right, let's see it. Refresh, and there we go. The lines are all connected and we can see the path of the lift, which is really cool. So let's say I want to put a floor here, and I refresh. There we go, the path updates accordingly. And if I break this and refresh, a second, oh, did the second lift spawn? A second lift spawned, supposed to be just these two tracks, and then Hmm. The weird thing happened. It's because it still thinks that that lift is connecting all of these. So I guess that's the issue when we refresh it and the path is shortened, then it doesn't work. Right? Yeah, so we're gonna have to break this and then do it again. Now it registers the shorter path and then if I do this, then it registers that path. All right, I guess that's a bug to fix for another time. Unfortunately, I don't have too much time to work on this today. I still have a lot around the house to do, so I can't just keep coding right now. Hmm, now there's two lifts in this area. I break that, both of them goes away. Refresh, there we go. Alright, let me demo this one more time for those of you who like to skip the video to the interesting parts, I guess. Skip the parts where I'm coding. So, lifts now support diagonal tracks and horizontal tracks. So this is how I've been building my tracks with the horizontal track, vertical track, floor track, as well as the corner track. The corner track can be placed in any of these four orientations depending on where on the block you point at and I haven't coded in the button rendering yet so you're gonna have to imagine that they have up and down buttons so if I click on it the lift will be requested and come to the specified floor and if I'm holding the refresher it'll also show me like the path of the lift so if you're trying to debug it it's not gonna be too difficult so I requested this floor, the lift is going to come to this floor. And down here, and oh, that was weird. 
The movement is still a bit glitchy, but you get the idea. So, just gonna go down to that floor. And go up. Because I pressed this one. So, still some bugs to fix, but I'm excited about this update. And if, in case you're wondering, how come you're adding more new features rather than just getting 4.0 out the door? My answer to that is, I needed to rewrite the lift code anyway as part of the new backend. So I might as well implement horizontal lines, horizontal tracks, because that's not much more effort. It's still the main lift logic. So the hard part is coding the backend and the logic and how the lift moves and all of that. It has nothing much to do with adding horizontal or vertical tracks. So that's why I chose to add it because I know some of you suggested on the Discord and thank you for that. Now it's going to be implemented in 4.0 and it's going to be really fun. So thank you so much for watching. Unfortunately I don't have that much time to code today. And please remember to like the video. If you're excited for the 4.0 update, subscribe to the channel so that you can get future updates. And thank you so much for watching. I'll see you next time. Bye!